Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, hopefully, you've had a chance to look through the first slide that was up, some key dates and information. Um, just an introduction. My name is Mr. Lampard. I'm sure I've met most of you over the years um, or had some kind of contact. I'm one of the assistant head teachers um, at Farlingay. Um, as it says um, at the bottom, if you have any questions throughout this whole video, um, please do type it into the chat function. Um, if it's specific um, about your child, there is a way you can um, do it, or you can just email me direct. And my email is jlampard and then the at farlingay.suffolk.sch.uk. Um, or if it's a question that you feel everyone um, would be beneficial for everyone to have, um, you can put it into the chat function. And I will basically, at the end of the presentation, I will go live. Um, I should appear on your screens and then I will address every question that's been asked where I can. Um, if I can't, I will then get back to those. Um, parents individually, or if it's, again, useful for everyone, I should put it in a letter. Just a note, um, when this is finished tonight, um, I am going to record this, and then I will send the link. So if you know of anyone that wasn't able to attend, there's any bits you want to revisit, um, over the next week or so, I will send this to the IT department. They will upload it to our Microsoft stream, and then I'll be able to send a link out to all parents and carers so you can watch this back or share it with anyone um, that you feel it would be beneficial to. The other thing that we are looking at doing um, over the next sort of half term or so is introducing a booklet, so sort of a course booklet for every subject. So there will be a booklet sent home with information about every subject in there. So just to run through these key dates so you're aware, um, we start off this week, I should be doing a year 10 mindset assembly. This is all linked in with the third bullet point. Um, about my future self, and that's a big project that runs throughout this half term. Um, will your future self thank you for decisions you're making now? And we have some outside speakers coming in, and it's been successful. It's been the fourth year that we've run this. Obviously, tonight, the Year 10 Parents and Carers um, Guide to Spotting Your Kids with GCSE, I'm um, jumping up a bullet point, is tonight. And then, sort of over the next few weeks until Easter, we have we will have 36 Year 10s receiving some online tutoring in English, Math, and Science. Uh, letters will come out. Um, sort of end of January about that if your child is selected to do that by the English Math and Science team. Um, the next report, the staff deadline for the next year 10 report is the 5th of Feb, so you'll get them sort of a week, 10 days after that deadline, after the um, quality assurance checks and all that kind of stuff has taken place. That's then followed up with the year 10 parents, even on the 14th of March, which leads us into our Easter holidays um, and year 10 eternal assessments start sort of a week after we're back to school after the Easter holidays. So uh, we'll be doing some prep all the way through this My Future Self, some revision stuff, some exam prep, all ready for the internal assessments um, with the results in May. Um, and that pushes all the way through to the final report for the year at the end of June before sort of the June, July stuff onto the end of the end of year 10. So what is this evening all about? Well, it's this basically, what can a parent or carer do to support um, their child when they're running through their GCSEs? Um, School changes every year. Obviously, in the last two years, we've had massive change, massive disruption, massive impact um, on our students, and it's how best we can support them. Um, if we just leave them to it in, in lesson time, we will see students not being as successful as we possibly can be. It's the support around them, the support from the tutor, the year team, um, other members of the staff, but also the support from home. Um, a supportive home environment um, will go such a massive way to success for the students moving forward. So on this slide, we look at some uh, common frustrations um, that you may hear at home. Um, these are probably the top six most important ones that we've heard from parents and carers over the last few years. Um, as it says they're leaving to the last minute, um, stress, so many different websites, um, panicking, all this kind of stuff. Um, and I fully understand with a daughter in year nine, um, a son of a year a bit lower, that when you do try and support, it does come across as nagging. Um, so what we're going to do is ensure that we do this as early as possible to provide support, uh, the right communication. We're not naggers, we're actually supporters. So in terms of support at school, um, you've obviously got the year team, um, which is Mr. McDonald's head of year nine, and then his two assistant year coordinators, Mr. Austin and Miss Cresdy. Um, you have the whole leadership team, um, in particular Miss Laird, who um, looks after everything key stage four, so you're 10 and 11 and myself obviously who are doing this, these kind of things and more than happy to help, but all the leadership team. But the two probably key roles uh, for you guys to be aware of is the class teacher, who the classroom teacher is, who teaches your um, son or daughter for 
um, their subjects and their lessons so you know who to contact um, if there are any questions. But your tutor is key to everything. Should be the first point of contact um, with anything at school. Um, sees a student every single day. Uh, knows the timetables, knows the attendance, knows, probably has inf information, has a whole picture if you like, um, and can be that first port of call. Um, so that's in terms of support. In terms of communication, that then links in with what I just said um, about who to who to talk to, when to talk to them, um, and try and avoid that stress and becoming overwhelmed. And it's those kind of things. When we get to GCC, being overwhelmed over the next 18 months and having a smooth track through these 18 months. Um, is key. If things build up and we just, uh, often students just think, oh God, I can't do it and bury their heads in the sand and don't want to do it and avoid it. And then obviously, especially at GCC, and it's a great life skill as you go through, I can't just avoid it. You're going to have to sort of follow up and make sure something's done about it. So before we get to that, um, if there are any concerns, um, that's where the communication support come in. But then we plan those kind of things out. And later on, we look at the key dates and how we can do those kind of things as we did on the first slide. So the whole purpose of this first slide is to start thinking about how we can become supporters of our students, not naggers, although often it's perceived that way around. So where do we start? Top tip number one, get them to listen. Really, really simple, the most effective one. Getting students to listen, attending school, attending lessons, attendance matters as our attendance matters drives always show. Um, getting them to listen is the most important thing. Uh, attendance has dropped um, dramatically since um, COVID nationally. Um, attendance used to be around 95%, it's now down to just above 90%. Um, and that's a huge amount of absence. You can see from the um, attendance ladder on the side, having a 90% attendance means that you've missed 20 school days. That's one day off a fortnight, so one in every 10 days um, you're having off. And we have a number of students that have sort of below 80% attendance. You can see how many days there. Um, you'll be missing that's 85 but 80 percent that's one day a week um, and when you equate that to the end of five years if you have a 90 percent attendance throughout the whole of five years you've missed half a year of school effectively so if you have an 80 percent attendance you've missed effectively a whole year of school um, now these attendance matters drives and pushes um, aren't necessarily there they're not there to say you must be in school every single day you must be doing this that and the other if you're ill and you need to be off, we all have time when we get poorly and we need to be off and get better. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's there to try and make the most of every single day. So if you can be in school, um, like dose myself up with a lemon sip or something like that, or um, I can get myself in, um, that will really, really benefit me. Any research you do, it's all about getting students into lessons. That is the best place for the majority of students to be learning um, and making the best progress. <coughs> that develops, excuse me, social. Um, aspects but also um, not missing any work and then understanding you can work that through with the teacher. Uh, the other thing we wanted to push was lateness. Um, we see a number of students when the bell goes um, gathering and then trying to walk off and we've really really increased our um, presence sort of the 10 minutes after break lunchtime registrations to make sure um, leadership team and other members of staff are all out and about just making sure students go in the right direction. Not only does it disrupt their own learning, disrupt the learning of others, um, five minutes here, five minutes there, it really starts impacting um, on the students and the lessons that they're going to be missing. Every lesson, every minute counts, and we just want students in lessons um, doing the right things and learning um, as best they can. So this is top tip number one. So how can you make a difference? Um, well, as it says there, your involvement is crucial and can make such a huge difference um, at this time. It could be the difference, um, a supportive parent, someone that's doing the right things, um, can really be the difference between success and failure from gaining a grade three or a grade five, that place at college at the end of year um, 11 or sixth form or wherever you want to go. It could be the difference of getting there or not. Um, so Kevin Collins, the chief executive of the Education Endowment Foundation or the EEF, um, actually said that we know that levels of parental engagement are consistently associated with children's academic outcomes. We also know that a parent's job, education and income matters less to their child's development um, than the, what they actually do with them. OK, so all he's saying is it's so important, um, the parental engagement. It doesn't matter what the parents do, their jobs, their background, anything like that. It matters what you do with them, spending that time and the right time with them and can make such a difference. Um, and that's the thing, you don't need to be an expert in every subject and you just need to be supportive and doing those things. And that's what we're going to work through tonight. You just need to know how best to spend the time you do have 
um, and there's sort of three or four stages that we're going through um, and this is where this evening comes in. So what is my role as a parent and carer in supporting? So I'm just going to run through um, a number of these bullet points, maybe expand on one or two, um, but just a sort of a list to get us moving. Um, so you could be a link with your school and child, so going to parents' evening, asking questions, finding out how best you can help them in subject specific areas. Providing the tools for homework and revision, whether that's a quiet space, good Wi-Fi, a workbox, so things like pens, post-it notes, anything they need for there, so it's all there without them having to search and get adding to the stress of that first 20 minutes of running around trying to find paper and pens and all these kinds of things. So a workbox could be key. Uh, being the banker, and we all know as parents and carers, um, that goes without saying, but um, paying for the tools, equipment and revision guides that they may need. You could act as a study buddy, so showing an interest in the subject, helping them with homework. So I do this with my um, daughter and her maths often, and we sit down and work through it. She often shows me how to do the sums, not because I can't necessarily do them, but because the way the process that they do these days has changed. So it's interesting. She learns and she understands it better by being able to explain it to me. So showing that interest and having any kind of discussion about it. The entertainment officer, finding out about podcasts, apps, theatre productions, film, exhibitions. Obviously, that may be a bit tricky this, at the moment, but there will be a lot of stuff online. Um, but things that are relevant to your child's learning and something you can enjoy together. Sounding board and advisor, helping your child uh, to break tasks down so that they're manageable, keeping a subtle eye on the progress and celebrating achievements. Um, one of the things that students get overwhelmed with is when they have a huge project or things they've let things go for a few weeks and then they've got lots of stuff to catch up on. It's being able to help them prioritise and um, break the tasks down um, and tick them off in the right way. Um, and like we say, celebrating those things, finding a positive way forward when things are going getting a bit tricky. Being their emotional support, so this one's very key, listening to their worries and anxiety, helping them manage their feelings and solve their problems. Um, a problem may feel not quite as important um, to them or to us as it may do to, to the person that's talking about it, but being able to listen, discuss it, talk it through is so, so key um, and coming up with things to solve their problems. Being project manager, um, maybe agreeing rules for homework or revisions, time on TikTok, time on Snapchat, whatever they're doing, but balancing this, this time. Making sure that they do have the fun stuff because you do have to have a balance and a break of both, but making sure you've got your revision plans and they stick to it um, and that they're there and they're agreed times, not their imposed times, but that they're agreed times. Okay. Last couple, so you can act as a go-between. So you said it's the link between school and child this is similar so your child in school when necessary making sure problems are nipped in the bud and um, asking questions your child can't or won't so if there's any issues in school if there's any challenging times for the, for the child and um, to be that go-between and the final one information provider and interpreter searching out websites finding out about the subject maybe familiarizing yourself with exam structure and content um, whatever your individual child needs your chief role will always be that person who cares most in the world uh, the champion of their needs, the admirer of their every achievement, the most important role you will play is that of a person who will love them and be proud of them whatever happens. So how do we get term two off to a flyer? Um, this is sort of the parent slide. The next slide is for students, but this is sort of the parent slide. Um, so working through them, as we said at the beginning, getting into lessons. If they can be in lessons, to be in lessons on time. And that is so key. Those minutes that add up. Students that are late after registration or to registration and then off the field at break and off the field at lunch and just take those few extra minutes, those five, ten minutes every day or however long they're late for will really add up. Um, if you have an 80% attendance rate at the end of year 11, that will show mean that you basically missed a whole year of school over the years, over the five years. Um, so we're really pushing for that high 90% if we can. But like I said, I do appreciate everything going on at the moment. Um, from a parent side, really, really praising um, your child, making sure you praise all those good things that they do. Um, once heard a motivational speaker uh, at a teacher's conference talking about praise making the world go round um, and how it makes it such a happy and beneficial place for us all. So that praise when students do a great bit of work or they help out at home, whatever it might be, but that real praise, especially linked to schoolwork, will be key. From a parent side, knowing the structure of the course, um, so those key dates, the exams, when coursework's due in, and again, if you have those kind of questions, obviously that's in the school communication stuff. 
Um, but also, if you have any questions you're not sure, tutors the first port, port of call or exams office, whatever it might be, um, and to help them with the key dates. So we do this as we come towards um, exams, so to help key dates for revision and stuff. So nothing becomes all of a sudden you've got no time to do it. Um, but having a look that you've got um, an exam in one of the BTEC or CAMTEC type subjects and you've got some coursework due in for another subject and it's all in the same week. So we don't have these hot spot weeks where it's going to be absolute frantic um, and stressful time that we can plan those kind of things out. So looking ahead, um, maybe every half term, maybe even further than that, and providing some key dates and just giving gentle reminders, not nagging as it says down at the bottom there, but reminders and support to say to the uh, your child we've got these things coming up we need to get ahead of them and um, we need to make sure we're doing that and as it said on those common frustrations not leaving everything to the last minute and having two or three big bits of work that can impact their GCSEs moving forward what students really really need at home is somewhere a, a work area that they know is their area that they can work whether that's a desk in their room whether that's a desk somewhere else in another room but a quiet area that they can work um, and that's key in having the right resources um, will be key for that and all the things they need all those pens pencils post-it notes revision little cards whatever it might be um, it's just there in a little box ready to go one of the things that I think is probably the most important thing moving forward and I said this to the year 11s in the, the first term and I say it to sixth formers all the time and um, we're creating working and homework rules now that's together that you're creating rules of when you expect the homework to be done and um, making sure that there's also time for uh, your child to have their time so whether it's if they're playing sport if they have half an hour or whatever it might be on TikTok or Snapchat whatever they need to be doing but they need that time as well but creating those rules um, in a working environment will be key but it's creating it together so there's agreement and there's ownership from the student and your child um, of where they are but one thing I would suggest is before any homework's done this 10 minute organization after every day so Monday to Friday just 10 minutes when you get in, you organise, a student organises their their day, basically, their notes from their day. If it's in a folder, if they've got something to come home, or if it's not, they can remember. They've only had three lessons in the day. Hopefully, they can remember what they did. And just to make some notes with the date, what the subject was, sort of two or three key things from that, and organising all their stuff before they crack on with any homework they've got. That 10 minutes helps you organise all your notes. It helps transfer it into your long-term memory, and it's there and organised for what you did on those lessons, and then that can be kept in a folder. I was head of sixth form for a number of years at Farlingay, um, and I stress to the sixth forms that is the single biggest, 15 minutes of sixth formers, but it's the single biggest thing I kept saying to them is this 10 minutes before you crack on with any homework or when you get home at the end of the day, having a 10 minute focus on what you did and just putting it into your subject folders, date, topics, what you did, whether you found it, you can start using green, amber, reds, whether you found it easy, difficult, challenging, so you know that you might need a little bit more revision or a light touch revision, depending on how well you've, you've taken in the information. This 10 minutes organises everything and it actually cuts down time in the long run. As you said before, uh, the contact with teachers, having that positive relationship, um, being there, knowing who your student teachers, uh, who the teachers are for your child, make sure you know who to um, contact if you need to. And if you're not sure, tutor, year team, myself, Miss Lev, we can all support with those kind of things. Talk to your child um, about your own expectations and listen to your child's expectations of what they're wanting to be doing um, and what you expect from them, whether that's in terms of homework, whether that's in terms of next steps after after filing go, whether it's on to filing go sixth form, onto a college, whatever it might be, um, just start those kind of expectations in terms of supporting your child with their GCSEs. Um, Regular check-ins, not just every five minutes popping down and it becomes nagging or they, the student sees it as nagging. Even if you've got the best intentions, it will be perceived as nagging, I can assure you of that, um, having my own son and daughter. Um, just those regular check-ins, make sure everything's all right, maybe having a little run-through of what they've done, um, and then that links back into that praise if they've done it well, and all those kind of things, which I'm sure all of you do all the time, but just those kind of things, those regular check-ins that really, really help. And then, as I said before, that post-16 goal, what are the course requirements? This time next year, well, in a couple of, this week, in fact, sorry, tomorrow, the year 11s have the final go six form open evening. Um, many of them have already been to college open evenings. Many have already filled in application forms. Many have already had interviews at other um, places. The final go six form takes place sort of towards the uh, end of Feb, March kind of times. Um, but this time next year, the final go six form opening will be going on. 
Um, so it's only a year away until students will be really focusing their mind on what they want to be doing after year 11. Um, it's a real key thing. So having that goal, what is the course requ requirements to get onto it? Um, if I want to study A-level maths, I need that seven in maths. If I want to be um, doing uh, A-level PE, what do I need for those kind of things? If I want to go to a college course and do hair and beauty or plumbing or catering or something that we don't offer at Farlingay, um, what do I need to be getting onto those courses? And having that kind of goal, so you've got the end target and the goal of where my next step kind of is. And then moving on from that, getting turned two off to a flyer, um, sort of the student guide, um, it sort of mirrors everything that I've just said for the parent guide, so I won't go through this in too much detail, um, but from a student side, to be committed all the way through, to take care of these things that we're going to look at in a bit more detail, and they have in their assembly, their attitude, effort and preparation. There's going to be a million and one things out of their control. They're probably going to be aware of them all, but they can't waste their time and energy um, out of things that are out of their control, but there are three big things in their control. They are their attitude, their effort, and their preparation. If they take care of those three things in any aspect of life, but especially when you're talking about school and um, exams and getting to lessons and doing a coursework and all this kind of stuff, that is key. So with those three things in mind, the attitude, effort, and preparation is getting going to all the lessons that they possibly can do and being on time. Um, that they take responsibility for recording their homework, um, whether that's being uploaded on Teams, whether teachers or whether it's into the journals or they need to write it down somewhere um, and then they actually need to do it. They need to listen and understand all the extra information that you might have so for GCSEs there's going to be a lot more information than there was in year 7, 8 and 9 whether that's a little bit of extra reading um, around the subject um, there's a bit of extra research on certain websites which I'll talk about at the end um, popping online and doing some extra work that they need to do there's a bit more information that you'll need for GCSEs. As we talked about in the last slide, that 10 minutes a night to organise themselves, I can't stress that enough. That will be the single biggest thing I'm pushing for, the, uh, for students over this half term as well, is making sure that becomes a habit. If you get into that habit now, for the year 10s all the way through year 11, year 12 and 13, even on to university if students choose to go on to that, on apprenticeship, whatever it might be, that 10 minutes will really um, be beneficial. Students need to keep a balance, um, as we all do. Um, I remember, as I said, being head of sixth form, as it comes to exam times, I'd get in at seven o'clock in the morning, there'll be students already sat in the study room starting to do some revision, and when I left at six o'clock at night, they'd still be there um, doing their revision and working and stressing and everything, and that's no good for anyone. If they've been to lessons all day and every spare minute, they're stressing and they're going home and doing some more. Yeah, we may, may all have times where we need to do a little bit of extra work, but when you're seeing it day after day after day, there's going to be no good for anyone. So keeping that balance, and that's where planning, um, planning those expectations of homework, planning the expectations of revision, planning those expectations of all the key dates, so that you can put in those things that balance. So um, as a PE teacher for me, it'd be doing playing, watching um, some sport, going to the gym, whatever it might be, whatever it is for your student, like I said on the last couple of slides, whether that's a bit of TikTok, whether that's a bit of agreed time um, to have this kind of a break away from the, the academic work and the school work to have that balance, whatever it is for them, whether it's if they're creative and they're artistic, whether it's a performance, whether it's music, whatever it might be, giving them that time to make sure that they do keep a balance, to switch off, recharge a little bit and be able to go again. Um, often in this in these cases, having a good balance, obviously you've got to keep the balance, you can't just go, right, well, I'm not doing anything and um, I'm gonna be listening to music for the whole evening, and that's gonna be no good as well. But keeping that balance is key. And then that's what we've talked about all the way through when we talk about keeping the balance, not getting overwhelmed, those key dates, plan it, stick to it, um, and for students not to get overwhelmed. Now, if they do, talking to students, uh, talking to teachers, sorry, what we often see is students get behind on a bit of coursework, don't talk to parents and carers, and um, don't talk to teachers, and all of a sudden there's lots of things due in and they've just buried their head in the sand. Unfortunately, now we're at GCC um, level and moving forward, that's not going to go away, as we all know. Um, it's just going to still be there. Um, and the more we ignore it, the more that's going to build up on top of that and the more it becomes overwhelming. So as early as possible to talk to your teachers about it. Talk to you guys at home about it. Talk to the head of year. Talk to your tutor. We will all support. We will all make sure we support the best we possibly can. So I talked earlier on about three stages to success. Stage one is learning the content first time round. So whether that was online lessons, whether that's in lesson, and that's where that 10 minutes consolidates it at the end of each night, learning that content first time round is so important. 
okay starting to push it into your long-term memory rather than having to go back and start learning things again so being engaged in class all those kind of things stage two is a revision and how we look at revision um, and how we prepare ourselves for revision and finding the right revision that works for the, the student the subject um, that will best suit them because it will be different for everyone and stage three is the actual exam um, and what we can do in the exam So what we're looking at is getting it right at each stage. So stage one was learning the content first time around. So we're going to go through what can go wrong and then hopefully if we don't do these things that can go wrong, they will go right. So here we are. So the first one is, and you may well have heard this at home, not liking the teacher. Um, that's a big one. And some students won't necessarily engage with the teacher as well as they can do. That's really unfortunate if that happens and we hope that it doesn't. Um, but it can't be a barrier to impact on students getting the grades um, and success that they are capable of or should be getting. Um, so they need to sort of push that to one side and focus on the subject area. Um, whether there's a lack of interest in the subject, pick the subject or it's a core subject um, and whether it's I don't necessarily need it for my um, progression after, after year 11 or um, it's not exactly what I thought when I picked it at GCSE. Um, but you need to make sure that the interest is there and the motivation stays up. If thing, you find things difficult or students find things difficult, rather than really pushing themselves and going to that old adage that hard work pays off and, get, and giving up instead, that can really impact and it will only impact on the student. If they've had a couple of difficult times, whether it's over lockdown or with a couple of bits of coursework or homework or in one subject and so they're no good at that subject, that can really impact and have a negative in, um, impact on them overall. Um, and this is one of the things we said, poor focus or lack of focus or poor attitude and effort. So these are the things that are in your control. There are many things out of your control that we can't control, but these things we can do. So those are the things we need to get right. Um, and there's no excuse for this one. It's getting behind with homework. If you've recorded it and you're on top of it, there shouldn't be any excuse for getting behind with homework. So stage two. And we get to the revision stage, so this is where, whether we're doing year 10 internal assessments towards the end of this year or mocks in year 11 or towards the actual GCSEs. What can go wrong with a revision? First one is not doing any. Um, hopefully every student will do, do some and the idea of the year 10 internal assessments, mocks and things like that is to give it your best shot, not just think this is a mock I'm not going to bother. Um, it's about doing it properly um, and giving yourself the best possible chance so you can see where you actually are. Okay. Um, shouldn't leave it all to the last minute, that's where a revision plan comes in, your teachers, your tutors, myself will all help students with ensuring that it's not left to the last minute and revision plans. And that's where not having a plan, you need to have a plan. Um, not being sure what to revise, obviously you're going to have topics that you need to revise, that's where talking to teachers comes in, that's where understanding in that 10 minutes a night or when you've done assessments and you know your strong areas, your areas you need to maybe revise a little bit more, um, those kind of things are key. With revision being unrealistic, thinking you're going to revise 10 till 10 o'clock at night till midnight, um, these things can't happen. Not revising with your phone next to you, all those kind of things um, are key. Being realistic and thinking, right, I've got an hour here, I can do some real good quality revision on history or whatever it might be, um, and really focus and make the most of those times and turning off all the other distractions. Um, it could go wrong if you become overwhelmed, not knowing where to start, that's where your plan comes in. Um, and not making the most of revision activities, lessons and teachers at schools. Now in year 11 there will be uh, revision packs and revision days and all this kind of stuff to support. So it's making sure you make the use of those and asking those teachers because every subject is slightly different. The way of revising for every subject might be slightly different. Every student is slightly different and what works for them. So it's about what find, finding what works for your student, your child in that subject. And that's where we can support as well. So moving on to stage three into the exam. So what can go wrong? Obviously, a number of things. This is where a big part of the controlling your controllables comes in. Um, so making sure all these things are done well in advance and being aware um, and ready to go is really, really key. So obviously getting the wrong time and place for the exam is key. Having that added into your plan, um, into your revision plan and added onto the exam for the exam plan. Making sure you don't arrive late, putting extra stress and extra pressure all the way through. Obviously, it's a lot better to arrive early. Um, having had your breakfast, something to eat or drink to fire up the brain and the body. Um, not having a late night the night before. 
and you arrive in good time to take that stress away from that side of it. Um, and whether you do something for half an hour at school and um, before the exam or arrive exactly on time for the exam, but not arriving late. Um, being unfamiliar with the exam and the structure, obviously it, there'll be a lot of work done um, in all subjects. Um, I'm doing some of my year 13s at the moment, actually, um, in making sure they know the exam and the exam structure and what should be coming up when, what types of questions. So being aware that you do these kind of things, whether it's doing past papers, working lessons, all that kind of stuff um, is key. So there's nothing as a shock to you as you go um, in through the exam. Make sure you have the correct materials is key. Um, what you don't want to be doing is having to rely on putting your hand up and hoping that um, the school can provide whatever it is, whether it's something for maths or a technical piece of equipment, um, or even simple, something as simple as bringing three, four pens in case one or two run out. Okay, so it's make sure you have the correct equipment. Um, make sure you don't panic during the exam. Obviously, when you're panicking, you're not going to be performing to your best. You need to remain calm, um, even if the questions aren't exactly as they might you'd hope they'd be. Um, remaining calm, um, keeping everything under control will be key. Um, one of the big things is starting to read an exam question, thinking you know what the answer um, the question is asking you to answer, and then going for it. What we need to do is really get into that exam technique, and there'll be a lot more work done on the exam technique about reading the exam, understanding exact the question, understanding exactly what it's asking you to do, specifically what it's asking you to do, how many marks it's looking for, how you're going to get those marks before you even attempt to start answering it, um, and not having a poor use of time. So taking too long on some smaller mark questions and then not leaving yourself enough time on the longer mark questions. Um, all these kind of things are really key to get right and something that you can really easily control when it gets to exam season. So moving on to mindset, and this is a massive thing um, that my future self, those four dates, the two in January and the two in March will be looking at. Um, about these kind of things and I have mentioned attitude effort and preparation a number of times and I'll continue to um, all the way through the next 18 months for the, for the year, current year 10 students so year 10 and GCC mindset the first thing what is that now if we do the same things if students do the same things they've done in year 7, 8 and 9 they're going to really really struggle at year 10 um, there needs to be when we get into that GCC mindset um, and we see it when we move from GCC to A level as well often take a student a term, half a term a term, to settle into the GCC way of working, which is why we then plan to start sort of January time for the students um, with all this kind of stuff for them. So what is it? it? It's that thing of being able to take responsibility for your own learning, doing that extra bit of independent learning, doing that extra bit of research, that bit of reading, not just doing the bare minimum to get by, to tick a box, to go, yeah, I've done it, that's absolutely fine. To actually put the effort in to push yourself to do the best things you possibly can be. So that's where a GCC mindset comes in. Am I taking responsibility for what I'm doing? Am I working as hard as I possibly can? Have I prepared in the best way? Those kind of things are GCC and year 10 mindset. Now we've talked about controlling the controllables. I've mentioned it a number of times. Um, like I said, you need to be aware of those things that are around us, but if they're out of your control, if you're wasting energy, um, and you're stressing about things that are out of your control, I know it's really difficult to do, um, from a sporting background, I used to do this all the time. If I walked out to bat as a cricketer, knowing I'd done everything I could to prepare, if I get a good ball first up or early on in innings, not a lot I can do about that. But if I, I've walked out there knowing that I haven't prepared pro properly, then that is my responsibility. So if I control the controllables and I prepare properly, I put in all the effort I possibly can and have the right attitude all the way through, that is key. And if the students can do that moving forward in any aspect of life, but if they can walk into the exam at end of year 11 knowing that they've had the right attitude throughout they've put the effort in and they've prepared as best they can they can't worry about that one question that might come up that's a little bit that then it's a little bit tricky and they're a little bit weak on they can't worry about oh god i mean we had a girl unfortunately had a car crash on the way and what ifs all these what ifs that could happen you need to be aware of them and sort of have a little plan if something was to go wrong but you can't be wasting energy on all those things around it focus on those things you can control the next four things all sort of link into that. Maintain your motivation all the way through um, from now until the end of year 11. Obviously, that's really, really difficult to keep motivation high. But having that plan of when key dates are in, we can ramp it up a little bit and then take that, keeping that balance again. So we're keeping a balance in day to day life, but also over the whole GCC course, keeping that balance. So we know when there's sort of a little bit of a quieter time and we don't see maybe quite as much this week, but knowing next week is going to ramp up a little bit or whether we want to balance it across the two. 
Um, encouraging persistence all the way through, so we're not giving up when things get tough and we think, oh God, this is this is getting tricky, I don't want to do it. Always having that end thing in mind. What am I doing for after GCCs? What do I want to get out of this course? All those kind of things are really, really key. And being persistent, as we said, moving through GCCs and beyond whatever we're doing after filing gay, it becomes harder and harder and harder every level you go up. So being persistent, being resilient, and all those kind of things that we hear about are key for the, your performance and results. Managing students' moods and your child's moods are key. Um, not becoming overwhelmed, not becoming stressed as, we, as best we can. Um, and like we said, controlling those kind of things, that knowing if I've controlled those kind of things, all the other bits um, will take care of themselves. And linking into my future self and asking them that question at all times, whenever it gets to that. If they have a think about what they maybe want to do, and they may well have no idea yet, and that's absolutely fine, they may well not even know during sixth form, um, and even beyond what they want to properly do um, when they're older. But having a kind of idea of, will my future self thank me? So when I'm in my 20s, when I'm in my 30s, when I'm in my 40s, whatever it might be, will my future self thank me for making these decisions I'm making now? Is it the best decision to do what I'm doing? Or should I be doing something else? Will the other thing benefit me more? And that's key. And we've seen with the current year 11s that started in my future self project last year, how key that is. Pausing every now and again and asking themselves if they're making a bad decision or they're thinking about doing something that may not. Will my future self thank me for this decision I'm about to make? And if it will, great. If it won't, let's think again. So sort of putting this all together um, and summing up and recapping it, how we can work with Filingay. Um, like we said, the next 18 months, really, really tough, really key to remove that stress, not get overwhelmed, make sure communication's there and that organisation. And from day one, from moving forward um, through January um, is key. So firstly, from a parents and carers point of view, is trying to attend every event, um, even if it's remotely and it's a parents evening. Um, it's really, really key that we prepare, we have that communication and dialogue so we can find out how we're how young people are going. Um, one thing I particularly do, especially in times of online um, parents evening, is make a note of those questions that I want to ask. That may seem very, very obvious and lots of people may well do it, but in that five minutes or six minutes that you have and the time's gone, your screen goes orange and it goes red because you've only got time left, certain questions get missed out um, and that key bit of information and then emails need to go backwards and forwards and if we can get the things that we need answered there, sharing how young people are feeling, you know, discussing uh, those areas of development and strength that we can build on um, will be key. Next is the school calendar and key dates. Obviously, we started this presentation with some key dates. Um, it's really key um, that we, you guys have the school calendar. It's on the website, seeing what's coming up for um, your year group, making sure you're aware of it, getting it onto any kind of calendar or resource at home or online that you guys all have. Um, and adding things to that. There will be things that come out um, from subjects that you can add into that when there's trips or activities or revision sessions or clubs, um, but just having that in one central place so everyone's got access to that. So again, we're not asking and being seen as nagging, saying, oh, what day is this on, what day is that on? It's all um, laid out there. But the school calendar is updated and it's all on the website um, should you need it. Um, talked about this earlier, not waiting until things go wrong. That early contact and support, once things go wrong, um, and students sometimes become, like we've said a number of times, overwhelmed, try and not sure how to deal with it. It becomes a massive thing. If it can be nipped in the bud, support put in place early, um, these big things don't become these big things that cause issues um, and can be um, supported to the right outcome. We really, really um, value it when we have parents and carers contacting us or a supportive if we were to send an email or um, details home and again you guys attending this session tonight is absolutely fantastic um, but letting staff know that you want to work with them letting them know that you're there to support um, letting them know you want to know about things that are positive and negative what you can help with um, areas of development are key obviously we don't want to be bombarding all staff and um, staff bombarding you backward and forwards um, but just those kind of being able to touch base if needed um, if there is support outside of the classroom that is needed that is fantastic um, we've talked about the key contacts and gone through that, who your head of year is, who your head of faculty is, if you're picking up subjects or have picked up subjects that weren't necessarily done at Key Stage 3 in Year 9, um, who these subject teachers are, who the heads of faculty are, who you need to contact, who the tutor is, um, is vital. 
Um, the school communication, I know sometimes you can get many emails, many letters in a day, um, especially from me, and there will be more, I'm afraid, coming out from me. Um, but all the school communication then added directly into the school calendars that you have at home um, and your calendars, you know, so you're aware of everything going on. That is absolutely massive um, and really, really. So one of the things we looked at at the very, very start of this presentation was about some common frustrations and so many resources out there. What we've done is actually collate from heads of faculty and heads of subject some of the best websites that they feel um, will support you and child and their subject best. Obviously, they will then provide you know, further details within subjects, but these are sort of the lists of websites that you may want to have a look at. Um, I will. Rec this is being recorded, this presentation, and it will go onto the website, so if you do want to have a look back at any aspect, that will be there. Um, and as we move forward through towards the year 10 internal assessments, as we said in early April and beyond into year 11 and beyond that, we will have things like revision booklets, revision days, um, revision support and exam support and all these kind of things as we move forward. If you do um, want to go online or even get out and about into the high street, um, these kind of the CGP series um, and GCC guides for each subject are great. Um, I don't know a number of subjects have already given out a number of these two year tens and um, so please do keep a look out for those so on to the final slide that sort of concludes our presentation um, i've noticed hopefully that a number of questions will have come up through the chat facility and um, what i'll do now is i'll take a couple of minutes just to have a quick run through make sure i've got all of those um, i will then uh, stop sharing my screen so the powerpoint goes away and i should appear um, and I will do my best to answer all those questions. If there are any questions I can't answer or they are specific to a certain child, um, I will be in contact personally uh, via email or on the phone. Um, or if I need to follow up with any members of staff, like the head teacher, Mr. Smith, or year team, Mr. McDonald, then I will do that and then come back to you. But hopefully I'll be able to answer them all um, and then follow up with that. But if anyone has any specific questions you want to ask me individually, please, 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 as I said at the beginning, please do email me direct. Many thanks.